For decades, I have put forth a heartfelt plea to all Christians still sitting in apostate churches to obey that which is written in Revelation 18 verses 1 to 5. Sadly, most ignore what I have to share, but then that was prophesied. Today, I want to focus on the Seventh-day Adventist people by asking them one question. And any one of us can ask this question, and we will all hear the exact same answer. Ask any Seventh-day Adventist if their church is in apostasy. And all their leaders and all the people in the pews will all agree that, yes, the Seventh-day Adventist church has fallen. Yet even with this knowledge, they choose to stay in the church, even though their very own prophets stated long ago that Babylon is the symbol of the apostate church. Worse yet, after realizing that apostasy is what defines the Babylonian church in Rome, and all her daughters that follow Rome in all denominations, again, they still remain in the church. This is why even though they now know their church is joined with the U.S. government in a church and state contract that students of prophecy have known all along as the long prophesied 501c3, they still see no danger to sit there. And yes, as I have shared in many videos, this is why certain statements in the spirit of prophecy have been removed and many have been added. The leaders removed them long ago, and the Seventh-day Adventist leaders of today keep that documented fact hidden to prevent the people from leaving the church. Notice this rather blunt prophetic statement made over a century ago that most Seventh-day Adventists don't know about or just plain ignore. It says that the fearful results of a union of church and state, the inroads of spiritualism, the stealthy but rapid progress of the papal power, all will be unmasked. By these solemn warnings, the people will be stirred. Thousands upon thousands have never listened to words like these. That's because the SDA leaders removed them. She goes on to say that in amazement, they hear the testimony that Babylon is the church fallen because of her errors and sins, because of her rejection of the truth sent to her from heaven. The people go to their former teachers with eager inquiry. Are these things so? The ministers present fables, prophesy smooth things to soothe their fears, and quiet the awakened conscience. But many refuse to be satisfied with the mere authority of men and demand a plain, thus saith the Lord. The popular ministry, like the Pharisees of old, are filled with anger as their authority is questioned. They denounce the message as of Satan and stir up the sin-loving multitudes to revile and persecute those who proclaim it. I have met many Seventh-day Adventist people over the last 25 years that have all said the same thing to me regarding the state of the church. When they realized their beloved church stopped being the beacon of truth she once was to now become a bold and arrogant sister to Babylon and Rome, they tried to warn their leaders and even their brethren only to be cast out of the church by angry pastors and sometimes even hateful church members. But now, decades later, the truth is known far and wide. Many people left the Seventh-day Adventist Church and refused to be called SDA to this day because, as also prophesied, a fearful stain was brought upon the cause of God, which would cleave to the name of Adventist, like the leprosy. And how big is that fearful stain? Notice just a few of the literally hundreds of articles, pictures, and videos I have listed on SDAapostasy.org. These articles overwhelmingly declare that just as prophesied, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has become one with the Roman Church. And this happened even after they were warned, we are in danger of becoming a sister to fallen Babylon, of allowing our churches to become corrupted and filled with every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Did you notice that when describing the future state of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Sister White literally echoed that which was penned in Revelation 18, verse 2, that described Babylon? It says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. As I share a few of these strange and sinful fruits of this fallen church, if you're SDA, you need to ask yourself, do you agree with all these sinful acts? I mean, after all, you have to realize that whenever anyone from outside the church looks upon you, knowing that this is the Seventh-day Adventist norm for today, 
they will think, with much evidence to rely on, that staying in such an apostate church means, by your actions alone, that you must be in agreement with all your church does. For if you weren't, like so many before you, you would have come out of her by now. And so be honest, and ask yourself, are you really in agreement with having dozens of Sunday-keeping Seventh-day Adventist churches? Are you okay with the Hope Channel glorifying the Jesuit logo on camera when a little girl sings a song? Do you also believe it's okay that the SDA church extols the virtues of Ramadan? Do you believe it's okay to declare Allah is God twice on camera? Do you also agree that women can be ordained as pastors, or homosexual marriage is okay, or the health message is quackery? Do you believe it's okay for Seventh-day Adventist hospitals to use chemotherapy? Is it okay for Seventh-day Adventist leaders to run for political office? Or SDA leaders can study the Bible with Vatican prelates. Do you think that's okay? Is it okay that SDA leaders can wear Jesuit robes? Are you okay with the fact that your leaders in the Seventh-day Adventist church call the Pope a holy leader? Are you okay with the fact that they say that the Pope is no longer to be considered Antichrist? Are you also okay with the fact that your church is yoking in a legal binding contract with the U.S. government, of all things? Do you believe it's okay to gamble and drink on Sabbath day and it's okay to hold a Roman Catholic Mass under a Seventh-day Adventist banner at a racetrack? Do you think it's okay to use tithes to gamble in the stock market? Is it okay to give your tithe to the Pope, as your church is now doing? Do you believe it's okay for the Adventist health to promote the Catholic ascension of Mary into heaven? Or do you believe it's okay to break the laws of the land and hide illegal immigrants, as your church is now doing? Do you think it's okay to have Catholic doctrine in the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal? Is it okay to participate in the Vatican ecumenical meetings at the United Nations? Is it okay to honor the Pope with a gold medal? Do you believe it's okay for the Seventh-day Adventist hospital to merge with Catholic hospitals now? Or do you believe it's okay for the SDA hospitals to abort babies? And do you also believe that it's okay that the Seventh-day Adventist leaders committed the greatest fraud in U.S. history and had to pay $20.3 million in fines when caught, and they used your tithe monies to pay that? Do you believe it's okay for the Seventh-day Adventist church to join the church with the second beast of Revelation in a binding contract? Or is it okay to sue their own brethren, as they've been doing for many years now? And is it okay to use the tithes to pay for lawyers to sue your brothers and sisters in the faith? Is it okay with you that hundreds of Seventh-day Adventist pastors are now using the art of witchcraft in hypnotism, or NLP, and they're doing this during church sermons to mesmerize the people, to keep them in the pews? Do you believe it's okay for the Seventh-day Adventist church to officially deny the three angels' message? Is it okay for the Seventh-day Adventist leaders to rewrite the Spirit of Prophecy books so as to hide their prophesied corruptions? And finally, do you also believe it's okay for your church leaders to embrace Vatican dogma to declare the Trinity of Rome to be doctrine? I simply do not have time to surf through hundreds of articles that you see scrolling on the screen right now that prove the Seventh-day Adventist church has become a sister to fallen Babylon, just as their own prophet declared they would. Sadly, I just discovered today that while scrolling through these articles to share with you in this video, that some of them have been removed from the internet by the SDA church so as to keep the truth hidden. But truth can never really be hidden. Eventually, all those with eyes that see are going to know what they're looking at and come out of her before the plagues begin. And seeing how the Pope wants to assure the mark of the beast is enforced using his fake climate change agenda, and he wants this as a done deal by 2027, and he wants his new world order in power by 2030, those in apostasy today have little time to obey the Lord and escape the plagues of revelation. Thank you for watching. God bless.